I have been very happy with my solar powered golf cart, which I built about five years ago. This cart is equipped with two 100 watt 12 volt solar panels, and they've been doing a fantastic job of keeping up with my daily usage. I decided it's the perfect opportunity to upgrade to lithium batteries. I also will provide the links for the solar panels, charge controller, and the new lithium batteries that I used. Also, because we switched to using a battery bank that's built with 12 volt batteries, we can now also add accessories such as a 120 volt AC power inverter, essentially turning my golf cart into a mobile solar generator. The uh, six batteries that I had before were lead acid. And one of the things I forgot to keep an eye on is the water level. These are not maintenance free batteries. They have the caps that you pull off and uh, check them for water periodically. I wasn't doing a very good job of that and ran uh, most of them completely dry. I went ahead and filled them back up with uh, distilled water. They probably didn't have the right amount of acid level anymore either, which um, I'd always thought you fill them up with water and the acid was still in there, but along came winter. And as you can see, many of these batteries, the case split out on them. So they actually froze. Just we got a flat tire here. We're gonna have to deal with. It's gonna sit for a while, so we may find some other things too. But let's go ahead and grab the tractor and pull her out. Put her up by the garage where we can work on her a little easier. One of these up and pull it around. Don't look at this fresh part. Don't ask me how I know. Alright, I think the plan of attack is going to be to do the batteries first, make sure I have everything I need. Then we'll deal with that tire, clean it up a little bit, and put the uh, new charge controller on it probably. And See how it goes. I'm not usually a fan of the uh, fix a flat type stuff, but uh, I found this stuff right here redneck tire fixer. Check this out. I was actually really surprised how much I missed this golf cart. I thought when I got my uh, side by side here that it would basically replace it all together. And it can, in a sense, and then side by sides are great for a lot of other things. Uh, long distance, higher speeds, hanging out with a bunch of friends, just riding trails and stuff, those are definitely the way to go. But as far as chores around the property, I actually really missed this. Um, there's just something about not being able to have to start an engine, jump in, especially with the electric ones, as soon as you jump in, you hit your pedal and you can go. And if you're doing a lot of in and out, uh, yard maintenance, weed eating, uh, just picking up the trash around the property, whatever, um, these really are a lot more convenient than the side by sides. So here's what you're gonna get in the box. If you order the same ones that I did, the, um, I bought them on Amazon. I will uh, put the links in the description. By the time I post this video, I may have already been using them for a while and I'll let you know, um, hopefully in the comments or in the descriptions, how it's been working so far. So here's what you get. Each battery comes with its own charger. It's basically just a 
plug in AC power adapter with a with their own proprietary connector that I'll show you where that goes. And this is rated for 14.6 volts at 7 amps. And then here's your main battery. Man, these are a whole heck of a lot lighter. Uh, I definitely want to get a scale out and see what these things weigh. They, they don't feel like, they almost feel like they're empty, which is kind of crazy. So here's the 12 volt battery. They come in two different styles. You can get them with the, um, with the lug style top, which is what these are. You may need a wrench to pop those loose. Uh, here's the other one that I already unpacked. These ones I was able to undo. So these have the, uh, the bolt. If you need the uh, more traditional automotive style with the big post, they have those as well. Just make sure you pick the uh, other version when you're placing your order. Uh, they look very similar, so be careful on that. On the side of them, they have a USB port, so you potentially could charge phones or whatever you want off of the side of them. There's a power button just to turn the USB port on and off. And then you've got this port here, which is for their charge controller. So having their own charge controller is pretty, uh, or BMS, battery management system, that's a good thing because what that'll do is that will make sure that they are never overcharged. It also has temperature protection, um, maximum discharge current. It basically keeps track of all those things to make sure that the battery um, is never outside of its own parameters. And that's good because then we don't have to worry about as much when we're charging it with our other stuff. These are designed so they should be able to plug right into like an you know basic alternator on a car even and uh, be fine. Okay, here is the uh, voltages for out of the box. So not a huge variance um, for all four batteries. And I've got all four plugged in with their out of the box chargers. They do have a uh, red light that comes on while they're charging, and I hear a small fan running inside the uh, power adapter itself. I'm gonna have to do some shop organization pretty soon. Things are uh, stacking up and projects are getting a little out of hand. So I bought this one a while back. I was having problems with the one I had previously recommended because it uh, was not waterproof at all and it had an enclosed fan which drew air through it. So it needed good airflow, but it also needed to be away from the elements, which is kind of tricky. Uh, one of the reasons I liked this one is there is no fan or vents. Uh, there is an opening at the bottom uh, just for where the board comes out for the terminals. I did find out after I purchased this that they actually have a waterproof version as well. It's slightly larger, but it looks like it has an enclosed case so that these connections are no longer in the uh, elements. I'll provide the link to that one instead. When I purchased this one, I only saw the lead acid version, but I found out that they actually have versions made for lithium ion batteries as well. And since we're moving to that, I would probably recommend those if you haven't bought it yet. Uh, this is the uh, specs for the, all the models. And I went through and I looked at the technical specs. If you're definitely going to be using lithium ion batteries right from the beginning, I would go ahead and order that version. But when you look at the charge voltages um, of the one I have versus the other, they're both pretty close. Max on panel voltage is 43 for both. Oh, there's probably not a big difference between them. It's probably just got a slight difference in the voltages that it stabilizes out at and holds for the final charge. And keep in mind that our uh, batteries have a battery management system built in, so they're going to make sure that they don't get overcharged or overcurrent or any of that kind of stuff. So any of those factors that we need to be worried about for safety for the battery, the built-in BMS on the battery should handle that and take care of that for us. So we know we have two 100 watt 12 volt panels. Now this is more like what we'll actually see in real world conditions with it hooked up to things is the max you'll probably ever see the voltage is 18.9 volts and our current 5.29 amps. So we have a choice of where we could wire them in parallel or we can wire them in series. And if we wire them in series, we're going to two times the voltage, but it'll be the same current. If we do them in parallel, we're going to two times current but the same voltage. So when we're looking at the specs for what our charge controller can handle, I saw some of the other comments had said that they were running their panels in parallel. I think we're gonna be better off with series. And the reason being is if we take our 19 volts and we double that, that's 38 volts. That puts us underneath our max recommended VMP of 43, so we're safe. But if you were to run them in parallel and double our current, 10.6 amps, and that's gonna be higher than the fuse rating for this controller. This has a, uh, they recommend a eight to 10 amp uh, fuse for this. And since that puts us over top of that fuse rating, 
I think we're more likely to have issues running these panels in parallel than we would in series. The good news is that's how I did the first video. Basically keep the panels wired as they are and then just use this controller instead. I think the next thing we gotta do is just start removing these old batteries. You always wanna unhook your negative cable first. That way it reduces any chance that you might short anywhere from the positive terminals to a ground anywhere on, on the chassis. Basically, we're replacing all of these with these. I just stole my wife's bath scale, and, and that one says 68 pounds. And that one we have 21.8 pounds. So 22 pounds times four, we're looking at 88 pounds. 68 pounds times six is 408 pounds. So we're looking at 88 pounds total. 408 pounds total, um, huge difference. So having these batteries versus that is like losing 320 pounds of people riding around with you all the time with these batteries versus those.
overall, I'm really happy with the way this project came out. I've been running it for a few weeks now, and the battery life has been great. It seems to recharge very quickly with the panels, and it feels much peppier with the lighter weight. I'm looking forward to installing a power inverter to turn this into the mobile solar generator that I have envisioned for the next step of this plan. The biggest thing I probably have left to do with the golf cart itself is the ride is still very bumpy. I think the shocks are probably worn out. This is a 2001 Yamaha G19 and I think the shocks are probably mostly worn out but I'm curious to see what other people would recommend for upgrades uh, for the suspension because we do run it on some pretty rough fields and rough terrain in general. Found the video helpful please like and subscribe and i'll see you next time